Hey guys, John back with another Antiguru video and if you're enjoying these videos as much as I'm enjoying making them then please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, absolutely put that bell on, give us a notification because if you give us a notification then we can without a question notify you the next time we put up an Antiguru video. Now here we go with our question for the day and our question for the day is why are you maximizing an application site? Why are you pushing an application site to an nth degree? In fact, why is it appropriate to do so? Should you be doing something else? Now the problem is, in the property education sector, we hear a lot about the idea of maximizing. Oh yes, you absolutely have to maximize. The only way to make profit on site is to maximize. The only way to uh, get the most out of a site is to be the most efficient to maximize. Oh, you've got to take the site and 10 exit. Absolutely 10 exit. Now 10 x isn't big enough, we need to 100 exit. Whatever the hell 100 x actually means. And to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, viewer, and yes I'm talking to you, the solitary viewer who's watching this right now, in all honesty, when you push a site to that degree, when you absolutely hammer a site beyond the point at which it can take it, you're probably asking too much of that site almost immediately. You're asking too much of it straight away. Now what do I mean by that? How do we deal with that? Those are really, really big questions and the biggest of all is why are you doing it in the first place? It comes back to that why question that I was speaking about yesterday, Simon Sinek's why. Why are you pushing this site to the nth degree? Now there are some sites where you have to do it because for some reason you've bought it too expensively or you have to get to that point in order to make the whole deal stack up. There are some sites where you just have to do what you have to do. But then there are some sites where less is absolutely more. Where less is more. Now, I'm going to relate this back to the lecture I've just given on Class O prior approval. There are absolutely parts of the prior approval system that allow you to absolutely hammer a site. And Class O is one of them. Class O is one of those rights where you honestly wish the government would just introduce regulation to require the units created to comply with the national standards. That would be simple, wouldn't it, ladies and gents? That would be easy, that would be straightforward, because fundamentally we would be on a much better position than we are today. In the world of planning today, the, rule, the 10x mentality rules the roost. The 10x mentality is there and is there as a mindset. Now that 10x mentality pushes us to say, what more can I get out of that site? Oh, they got prior approval, did they? Oh, excellent. Let's push the efficiency. Let's push it beyond reasonableness. Now by pushing it beyond reasonableness, I don't mean, for example, taking 60 square metre one beds and squeezing them down into 50s to get them to a better standard because that's a more appropriate one bed and that allows you to release up some more space. Not meaning that. What I'm meaning is pushing a building to take 25 square metre one beds because a 60 devolves into 225s really, really easily, doesn't it? The stupid thing is that you end up hurting yourself. Whilst you may, for example, get more dwellings out of it, more capital value per se out of the building, your ability to mortgage that building becomes increasingly more difficult. You're mortgaging it as a unit, as one big building, in preference to multiple flats, each on their own individual mortgage. That's assuming you're keeping it on a buy-to-rent strategy. If you're buy-to-sell, your 25 square metre units only really 
attractive to cash purchasers because it's only the cash purchaser that can actually go and buy the property. The mortgage products for a sub 30 square meter dwelling in the UK today are minuscule. You've got very, very, very few options, one or two, and even they are starting to get twitchy about this marketplace. The 10x mentality, we must 10x everything, ridiculous, doesn't help because it doesn't help the property developer actually get an appropriate form of development out of what they're doing. And it's even worse when you go to site. So we see sites all the time as planning consultants. And we see sites that have got planning permission. Now these are sites that have got consent, ladies and gentlemen. Someone's been through the process, been through all the trial and error and got consent. And then the developer comes back and says, I need more. I need more. I need more. I need more because I want to get to a 30% profit instead of a 20% profit. I need more because it makes the deal more attractive to me. I need more because I've overpromised on this site. I've said I can pay whatever the rate was, whatever the going rate is, and from that I can go and complete. Now that doesn't work. And I'll give you an example. A Raglan Gatehouse, which is a historic building, we could have 10 x that site. There was plans we had in our possession given to us by the estate agent and the previous vendor that showed how to get we could get six flats in that building instead of four. We could have put flats in a different way, we could have dealt with it a different way, we could have put townhouses instead of flats. There are different ways of approaching it, but that wasn't right by the building. That wasn't right by the site. The site physically couldn't handle that. Now, essentially, as a planning educator, I've been teaching people not to 10x. I've been saying, no, that's not the way you approach a site. You don't approach it from a point of capital value and then work out where it falls in between. You approach it from the point of planning value and see if you get close to capital. So how do we do it? Well there are two ways that a planner will evaluate what they can actually get on a site. One is by calculation and the other is by constraint. So calculation is relatively easy. You take the national standard, you then, on a conversion, you apply the national standard to the net internal floor area, not the gross, because the gross includes all of your stairs and lift shafts and corridors and all of the good stuff that make a building a building. <laughs> so you apply it to your net. If you don't know how to work out net to gross, take 20% off as a baseline. Take the national standards and apply to net. Very, very simple. If you're applying it to a building site, then utilize the constraint comparison model. Work out where you cannot build, where is too close to windows, where is too close in terms of separation distance, how does it all work together? And then from that, from that, compare your site to others in the surrounding area, take a plot size for one of the adjoining buildings and divide by that plot size. That will give you the number of plots. That's a really easy way of doing it. But still remember you have to make room for roads and trees and all the good stuff that makes a housing estate a housing estate. It's very simple very straightforward and very easy to get it wrong because you are trying to push the site too hard. I hope this has been a very straightforward video to watch. I hope you've gone, eh, actually makes a bit of sense. Why am I 10xing it? 
Maybe that's a good title for this video instead. Why am I 10xing every site I look at? Or why not? Why you shouldn't 10x every site you look at? You have a great day. If you've liked this video, hit like, hit subscribe, hit notify, hit that bell. Because when you get the bell on, you will absolutely get notified of the next video in sequence. I've been John McDermott from The Beach Hut. See you very, very soon on the next Anti-Guru.